All right, so welcome back to another edition of Programming in R. So today what I'll show you is that there are several methods of doing the same thing in R. What we're going to do in the next 10 minutes or so is to show you how to calculate ATGC in a given DNA sequence by three different ways. And uh, those of you who are visiting the channel for the first time, you could go through the early lectures in R because ultimately the strong basics will take you forward in programming, right? And uh, uh, programming is uh, very intoxicating if you get a flare of it. And if you don't, uh, there is no problem. I mean, uh, you can do without programming as well. But of course, you understand that uh, biotechnology is now fast becoming a data driven science. And unless you know a bit of data analytics, it will be difficult to survive, particularly in research in, in biotechnology. So whether you are a bioinformatics student or a biotechnology student, or for that matter, even classical zoology, botany, chemistry student, I think programming is one thing that is now a necessary toolkit that every student must have who is interested in research. As of now, uh, Python and R are the flavor of the season, and the two together could give you a complete set of skill sets required for data analytics. So now we move to our studio and start with calculating ATGC in a given DNA sequence. All right, so uh, let's get started. Um, this is my default R studio here, and if you remember, this is the scripting area where I can load my pre-written script. This is the console, the standard input output terminal here. I can write my commands here. I can also see the output of those commands here. Now, uh, this is my environment panel. The, the variables that I use in the program will be, and their values will be displayed here. And this is my uh, viewer area where I can uh, go for help. I can look for packages. I can also install packages. I can see my plots and I also I can see my files here. So we are not using so much of this area for now, but when we talk of ggplot and other things, we'll use it in more details. Uh, so therefore, I put my video here, and then of course, we start with the main program. So let me open the file. So you say open file, and we have a pre-written script called DNA4. So we'll load that here, and, and let me load this here. Right. So here is your DNA4.r, and uh, if you look up here, this is basically counting the ATGC. And what we're discussing here is the multiple ways of doing this, right? So to count ATGC, first thing that you require is to have a sequence. And sequence can be had in several ways. You could ask the user to input a DNA sequence. You could read it from a file. But what we do here is the simplest method. We generate a DNA sequence, a random DNA sequence, right? And to generate a random DNA sequence, we first define a vector. That consists of four nucleotides, A, T, G, and C. So this vector is named as nucleotide. So nucleotide equals to combine A, T, G, and C. Right? So next we generate uh, a random DNA. So this is equated to a DNA variable. And basically what we use is a sample command. And using the sample command, we are going to pull off nucleotides from the, uh, from the vector that we defined earlier called nucleotide. So here you are. This is your uh, nucleotide. And we are generating a DNA of sequence length 10. So we specify that the length that we want is 10. And because we want a DNA of length 10, and we have only four nucleotides to begin with, so some of these nucleotides will be repeated. So therefore, what you say is replace equals to true. This is the command here. DNA is equal to sample. And then you are picking up the values from vector nucleotide. You are picking up 10 values and you say replace equals to true because you have only four values to pick up from and you have 10 positions to fit. So this generates your DNA. So let us now uh, have a look at how this works out. So we say run and we get our DNA sequence here. So in the environment panel, if you can see, we already have nucleotide as one vector which has four character values, A, T, G, and C. And then we have a DNA which has uh, four, 10 character values starting with position one to 10. And this is basically the sequence that you have. To show that this is random, let me run it one more time. So here you are, I run it one more time. So this is uh, the DNA that we're going to work with now. Then uh, the first thing that we also want to check is whether it is 10 nucleotides or not. Of course, we know that it's going to be 10 nucleotides, so, but still we would want to, to calculate the length because that would be required. So we say length one equals to length DNA. Length is the command here. DNA is the argument, and the value that you get uh, of the number of uh, nucleotides present in the DNA would come into length one. So when you run this, you have basically a value of 10 again. So you print length one, and you have the value of 10, right? Now, uh, to calculate the number of ATGC, 
we start with method one. Method one is simple. You are using a for loop and you're looking at individual positions in the stretch of DNA sequence that you've generated. And you're looking whether each position is equivalent to A, T, G, or C. Whichever it is equivalent to, we are going to increment that counter by plus one. So we first initialize the counters. We say A equals to zero, T equals to zero, G equals to zero, and C equals to zero. And then we start for looking for individual positions in this DNA sequence. So we say for I, and one is to length, which is basically to say that this loop is run from one to 10. So we use the for loop now to access individual positions in this uh, DNA sequence that we have. So we say for I and one is to length one. So which means for I and one is to 10, which is also going to mean that the loop is going to run 10 times and it will check e each position uh, individually. So for when it, the loop is at the first position, it is going to check for whether the nucleotide at the first position is an adenine or thymine or guanine or cytosine. Wherever the condition is true, that counter will be incremented by plus one. Uh, this is going to run for 10 times. And after running for 10 times, each of the position in the DNA string has been verified, whether it is equivalent to A, T, G, or C. And accordingly, a counter has been incremented. So finally, after you finish the loop, you have to print the values. So you say cat, and you give the order of the nucleotides that are going to print in uh, double limited commas. So this is A, T, G, C. And then, of course, uh, with the comma, you start with printing your actual values that you've calculated. So A, T, G, and C. Right. And this should give you the total number of ATGCs in your sequence. So let's run this and that should work out for us. So first, of course, we say ATGC equals to zero. So, so all the counters are initialized to zero, right? Then, of course, we run the loop. And in the loop, we are going to look for uh, individual positions. And depending on what is the value at individual position, you're going to increment one counter by plus one. So you say run. And then because you're printing multiple values, we say cat. And then in inverted commas, we give the order in which you're looking at the nickel type. So A, T, G, and C. And then, of course, you give the values that you want to print. So let's run this to see whether you are correct or not. Right. So here you are. And if you see here now, A, T, G, and C equals to 4, 1, 2, and 3. So this is our sequence here. A is coming four times. Uh, T is coming only once. And then, of course, G is going to come twice here so that is g and then you have c three c's one two and three right so this is absolutely correct so this is one way of uh, checking for what is the composition of the dna in terms of atgc so now we come to method two and in this method we are not going to use the for loop so there is no looping here what we use instead is a library in r that is known as string r library so what are libraries? Libraries are pre-written code chunks that can be directly called in your program. And uh, given the arguments, they'll give you the desired results. So the string R library, as the name indicates, it is basically meant to uh, manipulate the strings. And if you want to look at it, you can also search here and you say string R. So as the name indicates, the string R library can do a lot of manipulations on the string that is given to it. First, of course, we need to invoke string R into our current program, so we call the library string R using the command library string R. Run this one more time. So we have we are using library string R. Some libraries are present in the base pack of R and you don't need to reinstall them, but there will be many libraries that you'll have to install and then use and then invoke in your program. Right? The other important thing is that if you look at our DNA uh, uh, that we have, so let me just print it one more time. So we have a DNA value here, so let me just show you so this is the current dna that we have if you see here this is basically uh, individual positions are occupied by nucleotides here so this is the dna sequence that we have and we can see very clearly that you have position one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten occupied by individual nucleotides what uh, string our library wants is a string where you know uh, all these nucleotides are present in the single position. So basically what you want to do is to collapse this uh, and this list into a single string. Right? So for that, what we do is we use the command. We again use the same variable DNA is equal to paste. And in paste, uh, we give the arguments the DNA. So this is the, the list that you want to break down into a single string. And we use uh, with a comma, you use collapse. And in collapse, we do not give any 
separator. So this is basically to say that there is no separator in between. So when you do this now and you print your DNA again, now what you'll have is a single DNA string consisting of the same nucleotides that you had earlier. So this is exactly the same as this. However, now if you see, this is just one position in the DNA. So, so if you if you now look at the length of DNA, it, it should give you a value of one. So now if you see, the value of length two would be just one because this is now a single value here. Right? So now come back to uh, string R. So in string R, there is a function called str underscore count. And in str underscore count, the arguments that you give are the DNA, the, the variable in which you're going to look into your pattern. And then of course, the pattern that you're looking at. So for example, here you're looking at A. So you say small a, which is the count for adenine equals to str underscore count. And in the arguments you give DNA and also the pattern you're looking at, which is the capital A here, right? Likewise, you can uh, give for T, G, C. So you have everything covered now. And then of course you could say cat. And again, give the order in which you want to print the values of the number of A, T, G, and C. And then of course the actual values, which is small a, T, G, and C. So now let us run this and see uh, whether it can give us the composition of the DNA or not. So we run this here and we say here. Right? So, uh, and we can also check whether this is correct or not. So let's see the number of A's it shows as four. So in this string here, one, two, three, and then you have the fourth one here, right? Then there is only one thymine. So it can it stands out very clearly here. There's only one thymine in the sequence. There are two guanines. So if you look at this again, this is your two guanines. They are next to each other. And then you have three cytosines. So you have one cytosine here, this one. You have a second cytosine next to it. And then you have a last cytosine here, right? So this is uh, how you can calculate your ATGC without using the loop and using the library string R. Now, this is the convenient method when you're looking at only four nucleotides. So you could give your four count statements and the program is still not too voluminous and, and not a problem. But let's say you're looking at amino acids and counting the number of uh, each type of amino acids present at the primary sequence of a protein. So there are 20 amino acids, so you cannot give 20 such statements. That program would not actually be called a program. It is more like a manual thing. So you need to have a more intelligent way of basically calculating your composition of the DNA or the protein. So we now come to the third method where we combine string R library with the loop. Right, so this is going to be both loop and string R together. The library is already loaded into our environment, so we don't have to call it one more time. So first what we do is to uh, create a vector called NUC, NUC, and you combine the values individually here, A, T, G, and C. And so this is our vector. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run our loop for X in NUC, right? So which means, uh, Initially, the value of X would be adenine, then it would be thymine, then it would be guanine, and then it would be cytosine. So here in this case, when you say for, for X in nucleotide, the loop is going to run for four times, and every time the value of X would change from first adenine, then second time it will be thymine, third time it will be guanine, and fourth time it will be cytosine. So basically, the essence of using string R library with loop is that in the loop, we'll change the values of ATGC, and we'll use the str underscore count command to count the number of times each nucleotide comes within the DNA sequence, right? So this is our key statement here. So we say for X in nuke. So when you say for X in nuke, uh, the nuke has four values, A, T, G, C. So first time the value of X will be A, second time it will be T, third time it will be G, and fourth time it will be C. And here is where you're counting. So you say P underscore count equals to STR count, uh, the DNA, which is the, uh, the DNA sequence that you have. And in the DNA sequence, you're looking for the count of the X. X would be first A, then T, then G, and then C. And then finally, you are simply printing the, the value of uh, X and also it's count here. So, and then of course you give a slash in character. So give the end of line character. And here you close your loop here. So this is the closure of the loop. 
So now we run this part of the program and see what is the result here. So we run it here. And if you see again, A equals to four, T equals to one, G equals to two, and C equals to three. So what I want to emphasize one more time is that in programming, there are several ways of doing the same thing. Uh, what one is looking for technically is the most uh, time and memory efficient method of doing things. And the essence of uh, good programming is to do a thing quick, fast, with least memory requirement. So in this lecture, we have discussed three ways of calculating ATGC in a given DNA sequence. One is with the use of loop. Second is using the stringer library alone. And third is combining the stringer library with the loop to make the most efficient system of uh, calculating the number of ATGCs in a given piece of DNA, right? And uh, of course, in the next lecture, we'll discuss R markdown and its advantages. And then, of course, we move on and we'll discuss more things in terms of uh, the deployer library. That would be, let's say, two or three lectures later. And again, uh, remember, programming is about doing the program, not reading the program. So don't just read the program that I'm giving you or anybody else is giving you. Go back to the uh, go back to the R studio and start coding. Unless you use your fingers, you will not learn. So please uh, go back and learn. Also, uh, it would be nice if you could uh, like and share my video. Thank you. Take care.